Welcome everyone. Let's talk about how we balance chemical equations. Balancing equations is a core skill you need to have in chemistry because we need to, when we write our chemical equations, be able to reflect the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass is absolutely central to chemistry. It's why we began our year there. And if you recall, that law of conservation of mass said that matter is neither created nor destroyed. So the mass of what you have at the beginning of your chemical reaction and the mass of what you have at the end of your chemical reaction will be the same. The total number of atoms has to be the same at the beginning and at the end because you're not creating or destroying your atoms. And the number of each type of element at the beginning and at the end will be the same. Again, you're not creating, you're not destroying your elements. You can change how they're grouped together. So the total number of molecules or particles might change because they can be in bigger groups or smaller groups but the number of atoms you have will always remain the same throughout a chemical reaction. The process you're gonna to use to balance a chemical equation. First off, if you're given a word equation, you have to start by writing the formula for each compound. You have to turn those words into something that tells you how many of each atom and of each element type is in each of those different chemical compounds. And make sure that you're checking your subscripts are correct before you go any farther. You first have to define what the chemicals are and your subscripts do that. Then you're gonna count how many of each type of atom you have on the left side of your reaction and how many of each type of atom you have on the right side of the reaction. And write that down, make a table so that you know what you're working with. Then you change the coefficients, the numbers in front of the formulas. Never change the subscripts. That would change what the chemical is. We're not trying to change what the chemical is. We're just trying to balance the equation. So change coefficients in order to have the same number of each element on both sides of the chemical reaction. A couple thoughts on that. Remember your coefficient multiplies everything in the chemical compound. So make sure you're, you're adjusting everything that's changed. And then remember, if we don't write a coefficient, it is one. So you will own, always assume that you have at least one of any particle or molecule or compound that's in your chemical equation. Let's do some examples together. Here's an example where we're going to go from a word equation all the way to a balanced chemical equation. So if we have nitrogen gas, nitrogen gas has the formula N2 because it is a diatomic molecule or diatomic element, and that's a gas. It's reacting with oxygen gas, which is O2 gas, again, another diatomic, and we're forming nitrogen monoxide gas. So there's our unbalanced chemical equation, making sure I've got the right formulas. At this point, we're gonna go and we're gonna tally how many of each element we have. So in this reaction, we have nitrogen and oxygen. Right now, I have two of each of those on the left side of the equation, and only one of each of those on the right side of the equation. So I need to get myself to two. If I put a coefficient of two in front of the NO, I multiply whatever the subscripts are, in this case one, by that coefficient. That gets me two of each element. And as you can see, now I've got an equal number of nitrogens on the left and the right and an equal number of oxygens on the left and the right. And so my equation is balanced. Two more examples where we're gonna start with the formula equation. We're gonna make a little chart here showing all of the elements that are in this first reaction. We're gonna count everything we've got on the left side. We're gonna count everything we have on the right side to see our starting point. So now you're gonna look and figure out what doesn't match. It looks like the H and the CL don't match. So I will fix that by adding more. You're always gonna add more. I'm going to put a coefficient of a two in front of HCl because I need to get two hydrogens. And so if I double the amount of HCLs, I'll get two hydrogens and two chlorines. And just like that, the equation is the same number of every element on the left and the right hand side. Down below, we again need to start by making a tally of what we are working with. So it looks to me like the oxygen does not balance. Let's start there then. So I need to get myself to two oxygens on the right, so I will do that. Now this changes how many carbons and how many oxygens there are because those coefficients multiply everything in that compound. 
which looks like oxygen's good, but now the carbon's not. So I'll add a coefficient in front of the carbon to make sure that this equation is balanced. Let's look at one last example. Okay, we're again starting with a word equation. So we're going to turn this into, an, into a formula equation. Solid potassium chlorate. So chlorate has a minus one charge. Potassium has a plus one charge. I will need one of each of those. So my formula is KClO3. And then I am going to have this break down. So there's my reaction arrow to form liquid potassium chloride. Potassium and chloride are K and Cl. Potassium is plus one, chlorine is minus one. Again, I only need one of each of those. And I'm also forming oxygen gas, which is O2. I'm going to add my state symbols back in here. And I'm going to remove the charges so we can focus on balancing. Okay, at this point in time, if I take stock of what elements I have, I have K, Cl, and O. And I can tally how many of each of these I have. So here's the thing. Oxygen doesn't match. So we're going to fix that. But they come in sets of three on the left and sets of two on the right. I need to look for the least common multiple that both compounds can accommodate, which is going to be six because three times two makes six. In order to get six oxygens on the left, I would need to multiply by a coefficient of two. Remember, your coefficient multiplies any subscripts in your formula. This would give me two potassiums, two chlorines, and six oxygens. Now I'm going to balance the oxygen, which is where I was focusing a moment ago, by putting a three in front of that O2, and that balances the oxygen. The K and Cl, however, are not yet balanced. I'll put a coefficient of two in front of the KCl, and that balances my equation. When you first start balancing equations, there is a fair amount of guess and check that goes into it. As you practice more, you will develop an intuition about where you need to start and what sorts of things you will need to do to get your equations to balance. One tip I have for you is that when possible, when you're looking at the things that are not balanced, balance chemicals that are in compounds first and chemicals that are by themselves last. Because if you balance the one that's by itself, you might have to come back and rebalance it later when you change other parts of the equation. And if you balance chemicals that are by themselves, so elements, last, often you can avoid an extra step. Just something to think about. But again, you'll develop intuition as you go. Please, please practice a lot and ask questions when you get stuck.